Hi dear students, today we will talk about little fundamentals of transportation in the wing of highway, especially in side distances. What is actually side distance? The side distance. The visible distance ahead of driver for various operations of the road is called side distance. The visible, clear visible distance ahead of driver for various operations. What are all various operations on the road? To stop the vehicle on emergency, if there is an obstruction or there is a problem on the road, you need to stop an emergency. So the required side distance to stop the vehicle on emergency, we call it as stopping side distance. SSD is stopping side distance. If a slow vehicle is there going ahead, we can't follow that slow vehicle for a long time. We need to overtake and then go ahead of that slow vehicle. So for that also, driver requires some clarity in front of him. The clear visible distance to overtake a slow vehicle safely without any sort of accident from the opposite vehicle and without any sort of uh, uh, any problem to the other vehicles. We call it as overtaking side distance. These are the two important side distances we require on the uh, regular highways, stopping side distance and overtaking side distance. In the middle, we have intermediate side distance. What is this intermediate side distance? We'll talk a little later. So inter intermediate side distance is nothing but twice of SSD. If you know how to calculate stopping side distance and uh, if you know the fundamentals behind the stopping side distance, twice of stopping side distance is our intermediate side distance. During night time, under the vision of headlight, whatever might be the visible distance ahead of the driver, visible distance with the focus of the headlight ahead of the driver, we call it as headlight side distance. The headlight focus should minimum reach to a distance is equal to SSD, stopping side distance. So if you know how to calculate stopping side distance, ISD will be related to that. Headlight side distance is related to that. Overtaking side distance is a separate altogether. We, we generally uh, come across one or two objectives in ESC prelims in this area, side distances. There may be chance of one, uh, two marks question mainly in gate exam. Just a fundamental oriented topic, nothing much about it. Stopping side distance sometimes we call it as non-passing side distance. You are not allowed to pass ahead of the obstruction. You need to stop before the obstruction. Overtaking side distance is also called as passing side distance. You can pass ahead of the slow vehicle. You can pass ahead. That's why overtaking side distance is passing side distance. Stopping side distance is non-passing side distance. And uh, uh, you see, there is a picture given here. The driver is having, this is the driver's view from a vehicle. So the visible distance ahead of the driver, the visible distance ahead of the driver till here is called as side distance. And that side distance can be required to use it for stopping the vehicle in case of emergency obstruction on the road. Or if any slow vehicle is there, you need to go ahead of it. Actually, this is a two-lane road. Oppositely, one uh, auto is coming into the picture. The visible distance ahead of driver for various operations on the road is called side distance. And that side distance can be used to stop the vehicle on emergency or to overtake the vehicle, a slow vehicle, uh, if it is creating too much of obstructions before the driver. So you see, this is the nighttime driving of a vehicle. The headlight focus clearly going up to this particular point. Nowadays, you have very powerful uh, headlights. You have the uh, LED lamps, projection type of LED lamps. So the minimum focus, the focus of the headlight should minimum reach to stopping side distance. That we call it as headlight side distance. Whether it is vertical curve or horizontal curve, any, any place on the road, to avoid the problem, to avoid the danger, the headlight focus should reach to minimum of SSD. On straight road, the headlight focus reaching to the required SSD is not a critical task. 
the critical task comes on the horizontal curves and valley curves valley curve the sag curves horizontal curves also the road is taking turn but headlight focus can't take the turn there you need to face the difficulty but even in that particular area of horizontal curves or uh, valley curves the uh, designer should design the road in such a way that the focus should reach to minimum of ssd if it is not reaching you need to take remedial measures to reach ssd now we'll first talk about stopping side distance stopping side distance means you need to stop the vehicle on emergency we also call it as non passing side distance you are not allowed to go ahead non passing side distance okay so let us see the picture here assume that you are going by a car so on a highway you are going by a car the speed of the vehicle usually the maximum allowable speed generally will consider the maximum allowable speed of a vehicle is generally the design speed we never allow more than the design speed on a road design speed depends upon the terrain through which road is passing and the importance of the road if the road is very important like expressway and national highway you have the high design speed if it is a village road you have less design speed and uh, depends upon the terrain in hilly area you can't allow higher speeds in plain and rolling terrain you generally allow higher speeds so the vehicle is going with the design speed there is a maximum allowable speed and the driver is inside as per irc the minimum height of the eye level of the driver minimum height of the eye level of the driver should be 4 feet it is nothing but 1.2 meter 4 foot nothing but 1.2 meter that is the minimum height of the driver above the road surface as per irc you need to maintain that whether it is a very low seating car or otherwise a high seating car doesn't matter this much you need to maintain as a designer of uh, the uh, vehicles mechanical engineer will take care of that if the height of the driver is more than 1.2 that is better safe and uh, minimum requirement is 1.2 okay there is an obstruction on the road the obstruction can be anything a stopped vehicle can be obstruction any animal on the road can be obstruction or a stone across the road can be obstruction generally the minimum height of the obstruction as per irc is ada feet nothing but 0.15 meter it is a very uh, common even height of the curb the curb or footpath minimum height of the curb is taken as 0.15 meter so minimum most is that if uh, the height of the obstruction less than 0.15 we never treat it as an obstruction there is no need to stop more than 0.15 or equal to 0.15 meter above the road surface is critical we need to stop it so first the driver has to stop what he'll do the driver first react to stop it first the driver realizes that i should uh, stop obstruction is critical i need to stop it you see this uh, video graph first the driver realize that i should stop he'll realize the distance moved by the driver during the realization time is lag distance and then he'll apply the brake and slows down slows down slows down and then stops before the obstruction so the stopping side distance is having two parts the driver first has to realize that i should stop and uh, the distance traveled by the vehicle during the reaction time of the driver we call it as lag distance later on at this particular point he'll apply the brake the vehicle slows down slow 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 and then stops before the obstruction just uh, look at this uh, video again first what the driver is doing the driver has to realize that i should apply the brake the distance moved by this vehicle during the realization period or realization time is called reaction time just one second first the vehicle moves ahead with the same speed constant speed design speed because the driver is not applying the brake and he is already going with the high speed so 
the driver cannot able to increase the speed beyond because he is already touching to maximum allowable speed. So during the reaction time of driver, he will go with the same constant speed. Afterwards, he will apply the brake. Due to the application of brake, the vehicle slows down, slow, 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 slow and then stops finally. Okay. So just one second. One second, I'll take a pass. Pass, pass, please. Two point. I am Nikhil Kumar Saha. I got AIR one in Gate Mechanical 2022. I was enrolled in ACE online test series program. So test series, whether it would be subject wise, topic wise or full length test, it helped me to improve my numerical solving skills in all the domain of the subjects that are included in mechanical. It helped me to cope up with the new numerical type of problems which normally students face difficulty in solving in first go. So it helped me to cope up with this type of numericals and also I got to uh, know through different multiple choice questions multiple select questions which are now in the in, uh, gate mechanical. Yes. First of all, the driver observes the obstruction. He will uh, realize that I should apply the brake. Meanwhile, the driver moves for some distance. That uh, SL is called lag distance. The distance moved by the driver or vehicle during the reaction time of the driver is called lag distance. Then at this point, he will apply the brake and slow, 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 and then stops. So SSD is comprising of two parts now. One is lag distance and the other is braking distance. SL is called lag distance. The distance moved by the vehicle with constant design speed of V, small v I am indicating with meter per second and uh, time of travel during the reaction of the driver is called small t. Small t is reaction time of driver. Generally, the reaction time of average driver is taken equal to 2.5 seconds. The reaction time of average driver is uh, taken equal to 2.5 seconds. Average driver. And this is based upon a psychology based theory. We call it as PIEV theory. What is P called? P called perception. Perception is uh, to see the obstruction. P is perception. I called intellection. Intellection means driver has to analyze what exactly happening there. Intellection nothing but analysis. I is intellection. E is called emotion. Driver has to react. And uh, V called volition. Volition is application of brake. Perception is uh, to see the driver eyes will see the obstruction and send the signal to the brain saying that array you see something is there on the road. The brain analyzes what exactly happening on the road. That analyzing time we call it as intellection time. So an intellection is to analyze. After analyzing brain come to a conclusion that I should stop. That coming to conclusion is nothing but emotion. Emotion is to react, react for the problem on the road. And then it sends the signal to the legs or hands saying that array, you apply the brake, you press the brake, you operate the brake. Volition is application to apply. So after driver applies the brake, driver is just a spectator. The entire duty will transfer to the vehicle, depends upon the condition and uh, uh, maintenance of the vehicle, it uh, slows down and then stops. So reaction time of driver 
as per IRC is at 2.5 seconds. For entire action to take up, it takes 2.5 seconds. Specifications are important for ESC and uh, other exams and uh, numericals are important for gate exam. Specification is important like uh, height of the driver above the road surface, height of the obstruction minimum above the road surface, reaction time of driver, these things are important for us. Okay, so lag distance is V into T and then at this particular point vehicle apply the brake. Once vehicle apply the brake, it decelerates and then slowly it stops. If you want to find out the braking distance, you need to use the work energy principle. Otherwise, linear motion equations also you can use it. So, if you want to use the work energy principle, you need to take the free body of uh, the car here. What are all the forces acting on this car? The weight of the car is downwards and the normal reaction will be normal to the contact surface, it is upwards. Contact surface is horizontal, that's why normal reaction is upward. As no other force is acting in vertical direction other than N and W, N will be equal to W, normal reaction is equal to W. What is the other force acting uh, parallel to the road surface? Opposite to the direction of motion parallel to the road surface, there will be friction and frictional force is equal to quotient of friction into normal reaction, quotient of longitudinal friction into normal reaction and the quotient of uh, longitudinal friction range is also important, it is ranging from 0.35 to 0.4, it is range, longitudinal friction, the friction along the direction of motion is changing from 0.35 to 0.4, at uh, slow speeds the friction will be slightly higher 0.4, as the speed increases the quotient of longitudinal friction reduces to 0.35, at around uh, speed of 80 the quotient of longitudinal friction becomes 0.35, any, any speed more than 80 and above will take uh, longitudinal friction as 0.35. So, up to 80 kmph the friction slowly reduces from 0.4 to 0.35 and remains constant. This is practical observation. So, quotient of friction into normal reaction, normal reaction is the frictional force and normal reaction is equal to W. These are all the forces acting on this vehicle. Any other forces? No other forces acting on the vehicle. And uh, the initial speed here is, uh, I am taking it as a V, it is nothing but design speed in meter per second. So, to stop final speed is equal to 0, it is just stopping before the obstruction, so final speed is 0. Now use the work energy principle for finding out the braking distance, use work energy principle. What is work energy principle of mechanics? Work done is equal to change in kinetic energy, work done by the forces in the direction of motion will be the change in kinetic energy. What are all the forces in the direction of motion? N is not in the direction of motion, W also not in the direction of motion. Those are perpendicular to the direction of motion. So, N and W are not contributing any work. And frictional force is in the direction of motion, but opposite to the direction of motion. So, frictional force is creating the negative work. So, work done is force into displacement. Frictional force is F, the displacement during the brake, after application of brake is SB. I am taking uh, this uh, SB, negative says friction is opposite to the direction of motion. Now coming to the change in kinetic energy, change in kinetic energy is given by half into mass into final velocity square minus initial velocity square, final velocity square minus initial velocity square. For stay, safe stopping, final velocity is 0, initial velocity becomes design speed on the road, substitute the values. So, this is uh, frictional force, quotient of friction into normal reaction, normal reaction is equal to W and SB half, mass is weight by gravity, weight of the vehicle by gravity, final velocity nothing but 0, initial velocity nothing but design speed. So, this is the equation, cancel W and simplify for SB, 
cancel W, simplify for S B, that S B becomes V square by small v square by 2 G F. I am considering the plane road surface, that is why I am not treating the gradient here, I am not treating uh, uh, any other things, we are assuming that brakes are fine, brakes are perfect. So now, what is the, what is uh, the stopping side distance? Lag distance plus brake distance together is our stopping side distance. Just check up SSD is equal to lag distance plus braking distance. Lag distance as you told, it is uh, V into reaction time of driver. Brake distance uh, for a flat road surface V square by 2GF. So try to remember this equation, this equation is very important for uh, gate point of view. V is a design speed in meter per second, small v I am taking it. But in uh, ESC exams, prelims and all, generally they will give the speed in kmph. So if you want to use this equation, first you need to convert kmph into meter per second and substitute. It takes time. That is why what we try to do is, we will try to create an equation which gives you the speed directly in kmph. Say suppose capital V is uh, speed in kmph. How do you convert that into meter per second? If you have speed in kmph, so kmph to convert into meter per second, you need to multiply with 5 by 18, will be the small v. So in place of small v, you substitute v into uh, 5 by 18 and then simplify. Then what will happen to this equation for the flat road? So 5 by 18 of uh, capital V. In place of small v, I am putting this. Reaction time, no change. And here also 5 by 18 of uh, capital V whole square. Acceleration due to gravity, you take 9.81. And quotient of longitudinal friction, take it as it is. So this will be either you take uh, 5 by 18 as a fraction, 0.278 capital V into T plus if you simplify leaving V square and F, the remaining things will become as 254. So SSD, if you know the speed in kmph, you can use this equation directly. Capital V is kmph and small v is in meter per second. Small v meter per second, capital V is kmph. ESC prelims point of view, second equation is better. Gate point of view as online calculator is allowed, you can uh, convert uh, kmph into meter per second and substitute. It is not a big worry. And if you observe this equation, we have uh, SSD into two parts, lag plus braking distance. And if you observe this equation, the lag distance depends only on the driver characteristics. Reaction time depends purely on driver. And uh, the design speed is uh, not based upon the vehicle, not based upon the uh, other conditions. So design speed is fixed onto a particular road. So design speed, as I told you, depends upon the type of road and the terrain through which it is passing. Like uh, type of road means whether it is national highway, state highway or major district road like that, and the terrain through which it is passing. As per IRC, we have four type of terrains, plain, rolling, mountainous and then steep terrain, depends upon the cross slope on the road. So lag distance depends only on the driver characteristics, no way related to vehicle characteristics. And if you come to the brake distance, the brake distance depends upon the friction developed between road surface and tire. F is quotient of longitudinal friction developed between road and tire. If you have proper friction developing between road and tire, the vehicle stops appropriately. And again, as I told you, V depends on, V is a design speed, depends upon the terrain through which it is passing and the importance of the road. Okay? So what is the main important factor which makes the vehicle to stop? Such questions, logical questions may come in ESC, theory questions mainly. So quotient of longitudinal friction is mainly responsible for stopping the vehicle after application of the brake. 
so sometimes sometimes there may be gradient on the road there may be a sort of upward gradient there may be sort of downward gradient in such a case you need to modify the formula to incorporate the gradient assume that upward gradient i am taking it as positive and the downward gradient i'll take it as negative generally gradient must be taken as a ratio even though it is given as 2% 3% or in percentages you convert that into ratio so in such a case the stopping side distance is given by in meter per second i told you lag distance is no way related to the vehicle characteristics it is completely purely depends on the driver characteristics driver mindset and uh, other conditions so v square again uh, design speed is uh, a constant for a given road we can't change it only the thing we can change here is f f is getting altered because of the gradient make sure that gradient must be taken as a ratio plus is upward gradient minus is downward gradient so this is the modification of the formula we are making for the gradient and if you want to convert the speed into kmph as you know 0.278 capital v into reaction time of driver so here uh, there is no change so capital v square by 254 f plus or minus g if you observe this formula what you can conclude is the reaction the lag distance is no way related to gradient no way related to gradient so break distance depends on the gradient upward gradient plus g upward gradient is there on the road in the denominator you are using plus g denominator value increases because of addition in the denominator so what will happen to higher denominator reduces breaking distance lag distance remains same breaking distance uh, reduces if a vehicle is going upward it is very obvious that if you touch brake vehicle may stop because it is already going against the gravity going up so if you have uh, downward gradient obviously minus in the denominator you have higher breaking distance such a questions logical questions people may ask you in uh, esc prelims even in gate exam gate is aptitude based uh, paper so this is related to the gradient sometimes the brakes may not be that much proper improper braking system the person very conjus fellow is uh, maintaining the vehicle not uh, uh, doing the servicing properly improper brake condition brakes are not perfect they are not developing the proper friction in such a case the ssd slightly modification will come into the picture lag distance no change lag distance depends on driver characteristics the brake distance changes v square by 2g v is also a constant depends upon the type of road 2g is a g is a constant on the earth surface so the quotient of longitudinal friction changes with uh, brake efficiency eta is called brake efficiency if uh, efficiency again you need to take it as a ratio even though brake efficiency is given in percentage you need to substitute this in ratio the gradient you need to substitute it as a ratio even uh, brake efficiency you substitute it as a ratio if brakes are 100% perfect then eta becomes equal to 1 say for example there is 20% loss at the braking system 20% gone out of 100 so eta becomes 80% nothing but 0.8 you need to substitute 0.8 if 20% uh, losses are there at the brake condition once you have uh, braking efficiency coming into the picture the higher value of braking efficiency higher value nearest to 1 you have higher value means you have proper friction the vehicle can stop at a lesser distance if brake efficiency is very very poor brakes are not working properly very less uh, braking efficiency 
the vehicle moves for a long distance to stop. Less braking efficiency, vehicle moves for a long distance to stop. These uh, points you need to remember it. So, if brakes are improper, what is the only parameter which is creating trouble to us? The only point which is creating trouble is the quotient of longitudinal friction is not properly developing. All the remaining things are constants. So, only the friction is getting altered, friction between the road and tire in the direction of length, in the direction of motion of the vehicle is getting altered here. If by chance, if you have uh, both the problems, gradient is there plus uh, improper uh, brake condition is there, then how do you manage to calculate the uh, stopping side distance, improper braking condition? Then uh, stopping side distance can be lag distance, no change. The braking distance, V is constant, we can't change for a particular road. G also not, uh, not possible. But uh, friction getting changed. You need to multiply eta f plus or minus g. Make sure that eta should be inside, not inside the bracket. Uh, eta must be inside the bracket and it should be directly multiplied to the f. Some people what they do is uh, due to uh, examination tension and all, eta they will take outside the bracket. If you use eta outside the bracket, the eta is getting multiplied with the g also. That may be danger. We make sure that eta f plus or minus g. And uh, in uh, general ESC prelims and all, we can't use uh, this equation in meter per second. So, 0.278 capital VT and here capital V square by 254 eta f plus or minus g we will use it. Capital V is in kmph, small v is in meter per second. So, if you remember this equation with uh, gradient and eta, for simple, simple cases you can modify this. So, if brakes are perfect, if brakes are perfect, eta becomes equal to 1. 100 percent efficient brakes, eta is equal to 1. Eta 1, nothing but f plus or minus g will come into the picture. Perfect brakes and uh, gradient 0, flat road. Gradient 0 is flat road. What will happen to this? G 0, eta 1. So, it becomes braking distance becomes v square by 254 f or otherwise v square by 2 g f. So, try to remember these formulae. These are very useful for you in uh, solving the problems directly or indirectly. Derivations and all not required for the objective type of papers. The fundamental derivations they won't ask you even in uh, mains exam. They will ask you generally application level uh, derivations in the ESC mains. For uh, prelims and gate exam, formulae are very important. Formulae and specifications you need to specifically by heart. Okay? So, usually such simple questions may come in. Uh, uh, ESC, you look at the question, just uh, in seconds you should be in a position to answer it. The level of driver's eye and objective height uh, for safe SSD, driver's height mi minimum 1.2 meter, 4 feet you try to remember it and uh, this is half foot, nothing but 0.15 meter. So, answer is point, answer is option A. Be careful to answer such questions very quickly. You should not waste time on that. Hardly you need to take 10 to 15 seconds to solve such questions. Now, you see this question. What is perception and brake reaction time for SSD as per IRC? For SSD, we take 2.5 seconds. Reaction time of average driver is 2.5 seconds. In overtaking side distance, the reaction time changes to 2 seconds. As per IRC, reaction time of driver in SSD is 2.5, OSD is 2 seconds. You need to read the question carefully. What exactly asked in the question, you need to identify and then pick up the answer. If you are not reading the question carefully, there may be chance of uh, uh, selecting the answer in a wrong manner. Be careful. 
sometimes what they do is they'll ask you reaction time of driver in OSD. People may not read it uh, clearly what they are asking, but some people, around 10% of the people choose 2.5 even for OSD reaction time. Be careful about such questions. Now look at this question. This is a ESC question given in 2002. Uh, consider the following factors. Reaction time, speed, quotient of longitudinal friction, and the gradient. Which of the following factors are taken into the account for computing the breaking distance? What is the breaking distance formula? V square by, I'll include all, eta f plus or minus g. So for computing the breaking distance, we require speed, V square is there. We require longitudinal friction, we require gradient, but reaction time is not required in the computation of breaking distance. It is required in the computation of lag distance. So choose the option without one. This is an option with one, option with one. So these are the two options without one. And in this four is there, in this uh, four is not there. Let us check up uh, four is uh, required or not for computation of breaking distance. What is the four? Gradient. Yes, gradient is required for the computation of breaking distance. Flat road means gradient is zero. That is required. So the perfect answer is two, three, four compared to two and three. Like that by process of elimination, you need to select the answer in ESC prelims. However, you need to answer such questions maximum in one minute of time. I don't think so one minute is required if you have proper uh, preparation. Hardly 30 seconds, it takes more than enough. Look at this uh, again, a uh, simple question. Lag distance is the distance traveled for a vehicle during, lag distance is the distance traveled by a vehicle during volition time, yes, emotion time, yes, perception time, yes. So all these things are included in the total reaction time. Lag distance is the distance covered by the vehicle, distance traveled by the vehicle during total reaction time. It includes perception time, intellection time, emotion time, and volition time. Okay? So this is again asked in uh, ESC exam. The total reaction time of a driver does not depend upon. So this naughty naught is important sometimes. People at high speed may glance the question, they miss this. Actually, reaction time of driver is not depending upon which of the factors. It depends on perception time. It depends on brake reaction time. It depends on condition of mindset of the driver. It is no way related to design speed of the vehicle. Design speed is actually is a fixed value based upon the terrain and the importance of the road, as I told you. So out of all, the odd man out, you need to pick it up. The odd man out is the speed of the vehicle. So this is related to time, time. And here also mindset of the driver is very important. If a driver mindset is something different, thinking on something else, he'll react very slowly. So like that process of elimination, you need to take it and try to read the question carefully. You should not miss naughty not. Next is, look at the question. The design speed of a vehicle is 80 kmph. Uh, downward gradient of 2 percent is given. The stopping side distance if the reaction time is 2.5 seconds and f is equal to 0.35. Gradient uh, is not given means you assume it as a flat road. Uh, sorry, gradient is given, downward gradient is given. Uh, brake efficiency is not given means brakes are perfect as per the requirement. So I'll use the SSD with the KMPH, I'll take it 0.278 because speed is given in uh, KMPH. V into T plus V square by gradient is there 254 F eta is taken equal to 1. The downward gradient is given. So I'll use minus G. Substitute the values and simplify. You get the answer. 0.278 V is uh, 80. Reaction time directly given as uh, 2.5 is as per IRC only, V square, 80 square, 254, F uh, 
0.35 minus gradient 2 percent is given. Do not use 2 percent, you need to use it as a ratio. Ratio means 2 by 100, you need to use it. If you simplify, you will get the answer, you will get the answer as 132 meter. Just simplification, picking up the answer. This is a direct substitution type of question, uh, generally possible in gate exam also. Try this question. This was also a previous gate question, long back asked. Brake is applied, already brake is applied means uh, driver reacted, lag distance is over. Skids for a distance of 16 meter before coming to stop. So final uh, speed is 0 because it has finally come to stop condition. What is the quotient of friction uh, between road and tyre is 0 0.4 percent, 0 0.4? The speed of the vehicle just before skidding, the braking distance, initial speed uh, they are asking you to find out. V square by 2 gf you can take it. If you are uh, using capital V, this is capital V square by 254f, longitudinal friction. Distance, uh, braking distance is 16. V square 254F.4. Substitute and then simplify. Just a simple simplification, gate question, online calculator is allowed. So the design speed directly you will commit in uh, kmph, it is 40 kmph. You can directly pick up the answer as option C. Especially in multiple choice question in gate exam, negative marking is there. already taken. Okay. So look at this question, it is a variety question. A vehicle was stopped in 2 seconds, ESC question, where you need to use the linear motion equation sometimes. The skid marks measured 9.8 meter, vehicle skidded for a distance of 9.8 meter, the average skid resistance coefficient, skid resistance coefficient is coefficient of longitudinal friction they are asking. Say for example, you are going on a road in a vehicle and suddenly applied brake, vehicle skidded and it has moved for a distance of how much meters? 9.8 meter before stopping. What is the final velocity? 0. And how much time it has taken to stop? 2 seconds. Next, uh, they are asking you to find out the quotient of longitudinal friction. So first of all, initial speed I do not know. You can use the linear motion equations, what you use it in engineering mechanics. I want to find out what is the retardation. If you apply the brake, vehicle retards. If you know what is retardation, the quotient of uh, longitudinal friction is equal to retardation by acceleration due to gravity. Retardation by acceleration due to gravity is quotient of longitudinal friction. I want to find out retardation, nothing but negative acceleration. So I use uh, V is equal to U plus AT equation. V is final velocity is equal to initial velocity, I do not know. Acceleration, nothing but retardation, I do not know. But the time of travel is 2 seconds. From this, you can say initial velocity is equal to minus 2a. So, one relation I got between uh, u and a. Now, you can use v square minus u square is equal to 2as. The other linear motion equation, v square minus u square is equal to 2 into a into s. Final velocity 0, in place of initial velocity, I can use uh, minus 2a. 
minus of uh, minus 2a whole square 2 into a into what is the distance travelled 9.8 meter. So, this will be minus uh, 4a square 2a into 9.8. So, if you simplify for ESC point of view, calculator is not allowed. So, a square a gone 2, 2 ja. So, a will be minus a, minus a is retardation is equal to 9.8 by 2. Without calculator you need to simplify and f is equal to a by g. a is 9.8 by 2 minus a actually 9.8 by 2 g is uh, acceleration due to gravity I will take 9.8. So, friction is 0 0.5 9.8, 9.8 gone friction is 0 0.5. So, like that you need to simplify and get the answers without calculator in ESC exam. Okay? If time and something else is given, you need to use the linear motion equations whatever you have with you. Okay? So, what is actually skid? Skid of a vehicle is generally you can uh, see the skid, skid of the vehicle is, vehicle is moving down, the tire is not rotating that is skid. So, vehicle is skidding here you see, this may be in uh, Himachal Pradesh, the tire is rotating, the tire is not rotating, but vehicle moves ahead that is called skid. You see, the tire is locked, but vehicle is moving ahead. This is called skid. Skid generally occurs if uh, road surface is wet and you have very loose particles on the road. So, skid. Okay? And uh, sometimes uh, vehicle slips. What is actually slip? You see, tire is rotating but vehicle is not moving. Tire is rotating but vehicle is not moving is called slip. Again, same condition, loose condition of the soil and uh, then uh, uh, wet condition of the soil, even though driver is pressing accelerator, tire rotates, it won't move. You see, the people are forcing it to move it, tire is rotating, you see. This is called slip. Slip means tire rotates more than the, the circumferential rotation of the tire is more than that of linear motion of the vehicle. You see, why the front wheel itself uh, rotating? Almost all the cars are front wheel driven vehicles, engine is connected to the front wheel, that is why if the driver presses accelerator, front wheel only rotates. But uh, vehicles like jeeps, uh, lorries, buses and all, engine is connected to rear wheel, if the driver presses accelerator, rear wheel only rotates. You see, the driver is pressing accelerator, the rear wheel is rotating, but not, uh, the vehicle is not moving. So, this is a Mahindra uh, jeep, is a rear wheel driven vehicle. Okay? slip and skid. So, this is uh, just the simple fundamentals of uh, uh, the side distances I have given. So, you need to concentrate on this area and usually in uh, geometric design and all you need to concentrate on formulae and concentrate on specifications. So, I wish you all the best, do well. You need to practice well, practice makes everything perfect. Thank you very much. Thank you for watching. Thank you so much.